What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to make biochar from the dollar store. But first, we gotta take a little car ride. Let's go. All right, pulling into the Dollar General. So I'm at the charcoal section and unfortunately sold out. So he's gonna go check in the back to see if there's any more. But that, that right there is what we're looking for. Royal Oak, 100% natural, hardwood lump charcoal. Got it. So that was a huge success. I was really happy with that. Just got out of the store, as you can see, still in the car, and uh, just got just got the receipt here pulled out to show you that uh, there's no you know no fake in this. This right here was uh, seven dollars and fifty cents with Michigan State sales tax. It came to seven dollars and ninety five cents for this beautiful, absolutely beautiful uh, natural hardwood lump uh, charcoal. Now, for those of you that don't know, that's all biochar is. Biochar, which I'll get into some more information and details once we get once we get back to the garden, but uh, that's really all biochar is. Biochar is essentially wood that has been uh, that's been burned in a low oxygen environment, so it cannot completely combust. And what it does is it essentially burns off everything except for the remaining carbon, uh, the carbon shell of what it once was. So it's an incredibly porous, beautiful material to add to your soil to build your soil and um, you can get it right at the Dollar General. All right, let's go home. So we got the goods. We actually got the biochar right here. It's already made for us. We just have to make it a little bit better. But first, I wanna talk about what is biochar. A lot of you have asked me, what is biochar and how can it benefit my garden? Well, let's first talk about how it's made. Biochar all starts with wood like this. Usually biochar is chosen from hardwoods like maple, oak, uh, uh, cherry, things like that. And the wood is burned at a very low amount of oxygen so that it basically smolders. You see, oxygen is important for combustion. That's what the flame is on a fire. That's why when you blow on a fire, it usually gets bigger. Or if wind blows on a forest fire, it's uh, made stronger. And so the oxygen is what, is what fuels a fire. However, in an oxygen void environment, a fire can still burn for a little bit. And so what uh, biochar makers will do, or charcoal makers will do, is they will burn hardwood at, uh, for a certain period of time. They'll burn it at a certain temperature. And then what they'll do is they will simply close off the oxygen entirely. And then what that allows the, the wood to do is still burn, but not burn entirely. It does not allow the full combustion of the wood and turn it to ash. Ash is great for the garden, but biochar is also great for the garden. And so they don't want completely ash because ash then cannot be reburned. So there's still some carbon remnants left over because the, the, the burning of the, the wood is what burns the carbon. Now biochar is very porous, like I said. Um, and what makes it really amazing for the garden is that it absorbs water very well. Because of the porous structure, it holds on to water, but it also holds on to nutrients and not only nutrients, but also holds on to air. So because there's a lot of oxygen, because there's a lot of uh, water holding capabilities and nutrient holding capabilities, it acts as a sponge in your soil. It allows for mycorrhiza and beneficial bacteria and fungi to colonize that, that porous structure. And it really helps to uh, create a really good, uh, healthy soil. You see, after a forest fire, you'll notice that you go back three or four years later and it's more lush than it ever was before. And that's because all of that all of the ash and all of the biochar actually breaks down and lands in the soil, and then life actually can uh, can be hosted from that, and it makes it far more fertile. And so um, that's really all there is to biochar. It's very simple, and it can really be a huge benefit to your garden. Now I'm going to inoculate it first in a compost tea. I'm going to do that so that I can basically fill those air voids up. Right now they're very dry and it's not gonna be good for my soil in a dry form. In fact, there can be negative side effects with using biochar when it's dry. So what I wanna do is I wanna inoculate it and soak it with a compost tea mixture. That's going to fill the air gaps with water, 
as well as nutrients. It's gonna fill that up and then it's going to basically be able to uh, be spread in my soil, which is then going to help my plants in the, in the following growing season. So now the next thing you might be asking yourself is, uh, you know, how often do I have to apply this to my garden? Well, biochar breaks down very slowly. You see, biochar takes about three to five years to completely break down because it's basically just a carbon structure. There's not really a whole lot that's left to break down. And so because it takes a while to break down, you don't have to apply it every single year. I usually apply biochar to my garden about once every three years. And so you can feel very safe using you know, this amount and then letting it go for one to three years and you're gonna be fine. Um, the next thing too is obviously depends on how much you break it down. If you break it down to a powder where it's basically a, a crushed powder, it's going to break down much faster because the surface area is much greater. If you leave it in larger chunks, it's going to take much longer to break down. So it really has something to do with that as well. So like I said, we got biochar from the dollar store. It's as simple as that, but it's very important to make it better. You can't just, well, you could just use the stuff right from the bag, but it'd be very wasteful and you wouldn't really get a lot out of it. So what you wanna do is you wanna make it better. So how are we gonna do that? I did mention the two steps that we're gonna to do to make it better. We're going to inoculate it and we're going to pulverize it. Very important to increase the surface area so that you can allow more air gaps, more water holding capabilities, more air holding capabilities, and more nutrient holding capabilities. You also are gonna open up more space for bacteria and fungi to colonize. So it's all around gonna be better when you pulverize it. And then we're gonna soak it in a tea. So let's get to doing that and then it's ready to go in the garden. So as you can see, this is biochar. Extremely light. There's not a whole lot to this. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's light, that's for sure. But basically looks like, uh, like charcoal. Oh, one last thing. See all that dust? Very not good to breathe that. So what you wanna do, get yourself a dust mask. I really like these uh, N95 dust masks. They are great for stuff like this. You really don't wanna breathe the dust. Also, do this downwind. All right, we're good to go. This is pretty much good. All I wanna do is just break it up till you get stuff that looks mostly like this. I like, you know, I don't like a powder, but I like to have some decent chunks. They're gonna have some good surface area. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this up with some water. That's really gonna knock all that dust down and make it a lot safer to handle. All right, so now that I got the water in the bucket, now I can take my mask off. It is uh, very, very dusty. So you wanna make sure that you definitely protect your lungs with a mask like this. This is an, actually this is an N99 mask. Really, really love these masks. They're just so good for working with like azomite powder, any type of rock dust, um, any fertilizer, anything you could possibly be breathing. Protect your lungs. You only have two of them for your whole life, just like your eyes and your ears. So uh, can't replace those if you lose them. So protect them with a good dust mask. Um, but now that we got this wet, all the, all the dust is knocked down. And all we have to do is simply, um, you know, big chunks like this, you can still use them, but uh, just, um, they don't work as great. So I tend to put those in the compost pile and let those kind of break down and continue to weather. But all these other smaller bits and pieces, those are gonna sit in this water here. And um, they have a tendency to float. So there's a lot of water in here, but all we need to do is just add some compost to this slurry here so that we can begin to fill those air gaps with, uh, with lots of nutrients and uh, fertility and bacteria and fungi. Just kind of inoculate this up and uh, we're gonna be good to go. We're gonna let this sit here for probably, I would say three to five days at least to really get this mix inoculated before we add it to the garden. Got some beautiful fresh compost right from the compost pile. And now all we're going to do just add this to the bucket. This is absolutely beautiful stuff. Got some plant tags and stuff in there from, uh, from last year's garden, but 
This compost looks absolutely beautiful. It's black, it's rich. It just looks super, super fertile. So I'm just gonna add this in. And then, like I said, we're just gonna mix this up and let this sit for three or five days. There we go. And we'll push this down. Let that just incorporate in there. And that is really all it takes to make high quality biochar. Now again, you can continue to pulverize these uh, biochar pieces down to basically as fine of a powder as you want. But I prefer to let them stay in my soil in nice chunks like that because I think it's, it's the best medium between uh, a long lasting biochar and an effective biochar. Too big, it's not effective. Too small, it breaks down too fast. So uh, I think I feel like this gets me my, the best bang for my buck. And this much biochar, I know you guys are gonna ask how much this will make. So this much biochar, this is about a half a bag. So I still have I still have a, a I still have a really good half bag left. Uh, I will actually uh, get probably about a bed and a half out of this much biochar. So this stuff does go a long ways. And um, and like I said, so out of a full bag like that, I'm gonna get probably uh, about maybe two to two and a quarter beds out of it. So there you go, there is how you make biochar from the dollar store. I am so stoked for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed. I've been looking forward to doing it for a very long time because I, uh, like I said, I've used this, it works, and it's so simple. Now a lot of you guys might be asking, well Luke, I can't, I can't afford $8. Well, then make it yourself. There are a lot of videos on how to make it yourself. It's super simple. You just light a fire, wait for the fire to burn for 30 to 40, uh, 30 to 40 minutes, and then you cover it, and then basically make sure that you smother it so that it still burns, but, uh, but it burns slowly. And so you can do that in a pit. You can dig a pit, light a fire, and then just put soil over top of it, and that'll help to smother it, and then you just undig the pit and uh, get the biochar. You can do that. But there's a lot of people that don't have the time, they don't have the resources, or they don't have the space. They might be in the city. A lot of you guys that watch our videos, there's no way in the world you could ever make biochar at your house or you know, make it worth your time to get that much biochar. To get, because to get that much biochar, you have to have a really big fire. In a lot of cities, there are burning bands. You can't burn. And then if, if, there, are, uh, if there aren't any burning bands, where are you gonna get the wood? You know, There's not a lot of just wood just laying around for you to make that much biochar. And so for me, in our current situation, going out and buying it and spending seven bucks on a bag like that is a no-brainer. Because if I were to buy biochar online, we're talking it's seven to $10 per pound. And that bag right there was a, how much did this weigh? This right here was an eight pound bag of biochar. So it's a no-brainer in my opinion that uh, you know to get, to get this great quality stuff, just go to your uh, local Dollar General and, uh, and get it. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you did like this video, make sure to throw a like up there. It helps spread this video around. Share it with your friends. And also, uh, go big or go home. All right, catch you later. See ya. Bye.